So when we do some forecast, it is very important to have some set criteria for forecast evaluation. Because, you know, there are lots of studies which shows forecasting, but in reality, they may not be done properly. Or if you want to try them, you will see that they, do, they don't really work well. So one of the reasons for that is because the, those studies were not evaluated properly before publishing or like before being publicly available. But anyway, so when we have some forecast, we have to focus on two things. One is validation and one is implementation. And if any study follows all these criteria that I'm going to show you here, the studies are good ones. Okay, and if you're doing, if you're planning to do a forecast study, make sure that you touch on all these aspects of the study. First, now have a look into the validation procedures. So the first one is that we have to compare with well accepted models. So normally in forecasting studies, what we do is we compare many different models and we want to see that a newly proposed model is better than existing models. So we always have to have more models to compare with. And normally the basic idea is to compare with the naive model. Sometimes people use exponential smooth, smoothing models for benchmarking. Sometimes people use ARIMA models because ARIMA is one of the most common and widely applied one, so sometimes people use that one as a benchmark model. Whenever I was using artificial neural network models or VAR models, I would always compare it with ARIMA. So you, you should always compare with knife forecast, but also it is good to compare with another established model like ARIMA. So have this in mind. If your model does not perform better than any of the well-established model, then actually it means your model is not good enough. And then the second point is use ex ante validation. By ex ante, we mean out sample forecast validation. You know, sometimes so, so there are many studies which only look into in sample forecast performance. You know, if you provide the data, if, if your model already knows the data, it is very likely it will work better with the data. But the idea of forecast is that we will be forecasting in real world, we forecast out sample the future that we do not know. So our models also have to work well when we are forecasting what we do not know. So that's why whenever we are doing some analysis, we divide our data into two parts and then we estimate our model based on the training sample and then check the model with out sample. If the best model in the training sample is provides best results in the out sample, okay? So always do these ex ante validation. And then always remember that we have to have a reasonable sample of out sample forecast. You know, so if you have only like, let's say three peers of our sample forecast, you have a data of 1000 past data data points, 1000 peers, and then you only do three, three peers of our sample forecast. That doesn't really make sense. You know, that cannot really validate if the model will work well in the future in other out sample or not, you know? So normally most forecasting studies, the good ones, they will use like 40, around 40 out sample, out sample peers, and there are some rules of thumb for uh, selecting the training and test samples. I'll talk about that in later videos. But normally, make sure that you have a good number of samples. For instance, if you're dealing with monthly data, I would say at least have one year or two year of our sample uh, for validation of your forecast models, okay? And if you have like, let's say, if you have 1,000 data points, maybe it's good to use 10% of it or 20% of it. So you can use maybe 100 or 200 data points to check your out sample performance, you know. So always use a reasonable, too short out sample forecast period is not good enough, okay? So these are the three points for validation. And then we come to implementation. And the first point in implementation is convergence. It actually, this relates very much with the artificial neural network models where Convergence of the model could be an issue, but in most of the other models, convergence often is not a problem. Uh, in, ma in machine learning and deep learning models, it, it is a problem. It could be that sometimes the training data cannot fit the parameters and it doesn't come up with some uh, estimated parameters, so it cannot converge. So we have to make sure that the number of hidden layers we select has to converge the model. You know, it has to come up with some parameters. Sometimes it happens that some model works in some times and it doesn't work in other times. It doesn't converge in other times. So we have to make sure that the model we are going to estimate or we're going to, going to present converges every time. Okay, so that's one of the important issues. And then generalization. So 
generalization relates to the accuracy of the forecast model on the out sample period. So it, it so let's say a model performs very well in the training sample. It, it, it gives you a MAP or some forecast accuracy of 5% error or something like that. But when you look into the test sample, the out sample, then suddenly you see that it gives you error of 20%. So that is really problematic. Or sometimes you compare the same model with different data sets, okay? So let's say, if, for instance, if you are working with cryptocurrency, then maybe it would be a good idea to check the same forecast model for Bitcoin data, 3M data, Ripple data, you know, so different. You, take, you pick different cryptocurrencies and apply the same models on all of them and see if the models perform the same way on all the cryptocurrencies. So that could be one idea. And if it performs same across them, then it would mean that it's kind of generalizable. The model could be the, 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 the model implication could be generalizable. The last point is the stability. I have actually seen in many studies also, I have experienced this in my studies as well, is that, you know, I see that some models work pre pretty well in the training sample. Some other model works pretty well in the test sample. So this is problematic. My models are not stable, you know? So this is tricky. Sometimes we really have to make sure that if we divide our data in different samples or if we pick different training and test sample data, our models should always perform in the same manner across the subsample. And to check for stability, one of the good ways is to check for uh, cross-validation using ro rolling windows or expanding windows, you know, and I will, I'll be talking about those in upcoming videos. So in stability, the main idea is that the model performance should be consistent over different samples. Test sample, training sample, or different, ten we can have maybe one, two, or three test samples. The, the performance of the best model should be consistent across all these samples. Bye.